We've looked at standard single band bus compression, cascaded compression, and even compressors with two compressors inside them. But we haven't looked at parallel compression. Now, if you want to apply something that's maybe less transparent and more of an effect, a creative effect, you might want to use parallel compression. But what it allows you to do is create this intense effect, but not completely smash your mix. Let me explain. If I play this mix back and put some very intense compression in, this is almost limiting. And we'll turn the gain up. Let's go with a fast release. And we're clipping, so let's turn this down a bit. And we'll turn off this second compressor. There we go, that's just about under control. We're losing some of the low end. We're losing some of the original track. And let's go ahead and put some out output uh, distortion on. And I just folded down the lower section to access that, by the way. Now you can hear the difference. It makes the, 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 the drums pop a little more, but it's quite apparent when I switch it on. So what can we do to tame this? Well, there's a useful output mix down here. And this is completely dry and this is completely wet. So by using this fader, we can easily create what's called a parallel mix. So let's say we put 30% of this extremely intense effect in. In fact, let's go even harder with it. And let's put a hard distortion on the output. This is too much when it's 100%. But dial in 30% of it, and it's a nice creative effect in the mix. So we're keeping that low end intact. We're keeping the original dynamics intact, but we're adding some of that energy that the compressor gives. Now, if you wanted to go down the traditional route, we could go to the mixer or we could, in fact, let's zoom out here. We could create a new audio channel. We could, we've duplicated it. I've just used Alt there and drag. So I'll do that again. Just hold Alt down, drag it, okay? We've got a completely duplicated track. Uh, we go to the mixer and we'll open it up a little. I could grab this compressor and put it on the second channel, okay? We could then go in here and we could go to 100% wet and we could mix it in in this fashion. You can see the massive amount of gain reduction in this meter. So there's our hugely compressed channel and there's our original channel and they're just being mixed into the master out. So that's basically the same setup as using the output mix here. Some people prefer this second uh, method because they think it's maybe a little denser in nature because you've got the duplicated audio running alongside. Plus you've maybe got a little bit more control and you can always apply extra processes to this parallel bus. Whichever way you go about it is completely up to you. Of course, if your compressor doesn't have this output mix on it, let's say you use the Sonox or you use the SSL uh, clone that we were using earlier, um, you're not going to have that mix option. So you would have to go down this second route. So it's good to be able to execute both of them. But there's parallel compression in mastering. Uh, it's another option for you, gives you more sonic possibilities. In the next chapter, we're going to be taking a look at width and control. So stereo width and controlling the stereo field.